Hi and welcome into this new video on how to deploy Ceph in Docker with Ansible. Uh, this time it's a little bit different. Uh, I guess this video is an enhanced version of uh, the previous one because uh, during the last demo I was mainly relying on bash scripts to copy configuration files and keys over, um, over all the nodes. But this time uh, this, this is going to be handled by uh, Ansible itself. So that's going to be more straightforward and more automated as well. So let's get into it. I just cloned the latest uh, Ceph Ansible here. And I have um, five nodes at my disposal. So in terms of configuration, what we have to do first is to enable serialized deployment. Um, because basically we have to to bootstrap uh, configuration files and keys, but we also have to copy them over to the Ansible server. So if that if that happens um, at the same time on every single node, they won't be able to detect that another node is doing the same thing as well. So you will end up having three uh, three monitors, uh, but uh, standalone monitors. So this is not really what we want. So uh, for this, we have to serialize the deployment. So we're going to be deploying uh, monitors one by one. Um, in terms of configuration, it's pretty straightforward. So uh, you simply need to enable the global Docker variable, and then we're gonna go through every single individual uh, components that we uh, that we're gonna deploy. Uh, I already I already did that, but you mainly have to enable the self containerized deployment, um, and then you have to use the all of our images are hosted on the git on the um, Docker Hub. We use the safe namespace for that. And, uh, our main image is uh, called Daemon. So for this monitor, we have to specify an interface where where we want this monitor to be listening on. We have to to give a subnet as well. This will help us uh, to um, to give a proper network for our OSDs later. And then we can we, we have a really elegant mechanism where we can easily pass new variables. Um, for example, when you when you do a Docker run, you can do Docker run dash e my variable dash e my variable again, and this this is mainly the same. So you can have as many um, available variables as you want. The idea here is that um, we don't really want to to always have had add one new option for for every single option that uh, that land uh, in Ceph Docker, so now if you know that that is a new option in Ceph Docker, you can easily pass this new version, and we don't have to do um, any modification on the Ceph Ansible code. Next for the OSDs, so first three lines are the same. Uh, difference is that we have to, uh, of course, um, pass several block devices. And uh, same again about this extra um, environment uh, variable. So in this case, I'm, I'm specifying that I use uh, the OSD self disk scenario, which means that we're going to be using self disk to prepare and activate our OSDs. And I'm going to be using OSD for zap to one because I already bootstrapped uh, previously some OSDs and Obviously, I still have Ceph partitions, so we have a check for that in Ceph Docker. So if we detect that there is a partition already called Ceph, then we don't do anything. So if you want to override this, you have to set this, var this variable. And what we will do is just zap um, arrays, partitions, create new labels. In terms of MDS, uh, there is not much to do. It's pretty straightforward. Just, just set up a, uh, a different name if you want. For Rados Gateway, um, use uh, the default yeah, CVET web uh, embedded uh, web server from C++. And you can specify your port, so 8080 in our case. And same again, you can, you can specify more options if you want. And lastly, we have the Cephrest API. So well, we, we know it's not like widely used, but uh, we, we have it anyway. Um, so we can specify on which interface we want the, this process to be listening on, listening on, on which port, and and so forth. 
Um, so let me quickly show you, show you um, the, the topology here. So I have we're going to be deploying three monitors on Ceph Eno one, the one, two, three, and then four with these, one Rodos Gateway, one REST API, and one MDS. I'm going to time this so you will see. Uh, just for you to know, I already prefetched uh, the images. Well, the image, because there is only one image, actually. Um, it, it saves us about three minutes, so it's not much. Um, I'll let this rolling now. Uh, I'm not going to be quiet. I, it's, it's pretty fast, so I'll try to comment as, <laughs> as much as I can. So we create a bunch of directories just to, to host keys now. Uh, we just boost up the first mon and we copied over the files to Dansible server. So here's the second. Um, what we can do is uh, wait for the second moni monitor to be up and check the status. So should be up now. So as, as you can see, we have two monitors. So the, the, the third one is being bootstrapped at the moment. Now, and he, he, here it is, we have three months, and now we, we are just starting to bootstrap the OSDs. So every single time we bootstrap, first we copy all the configuration files into itsysf uh, and bootstrap keys, uh, volibsf uh, bootstrap. Um, now we, we, just, we just launched some of the OSDs. Uh, we should see some processes here, yes. Yeah, we have um, you know 3 osd dash dev and the name of the device. So now we are bootstrapping the Rados gateway. Copy, copy the keys, and we're good. So what do we have here? So first, let's let's check the the status really quickly. Um, as you can see, it's still bootstrapping because we have 16 OSDs. Uh, 19 so, if, so we have 20 OSDs now but uh, in the end we should uh, we should have 28 because we have six devices per host and we have four so here we have them now just a bit of peering and yes we're good so we just have this health uh, worn just because we have too few PGs per OSDs, but it's not really an issue for now. Um, so everything is up and running. As you can see, we have this MDS map. So we have um, Cepino 1, and this one is active. So we have the Cepino MDS. So yeah, I f forgot to mention, but it took, um, how long did it took? Um, it took one one minute and twenty nine seconds to reset the entire uh, platform, so it's it's quite fast. Um, if we now have a look at, uh, so we we should we should see the REST API listening on five thousand. So if we curl that, yeah, we have all the monitors options, so it works. Um, now we should try to do the same for the Redis gateway. So. I remember correctly. Well, my history remembers it actually. Um, it was 8080, and no, it's not this node, but it's this one. So you see, we have this uh, bucket result. Um, so this this was the the response from from Redis Gateway. So yeah, that's it. I, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, as a reminder, Sensible is all still on GitHub. And then under the safe namespace, .com, so github.com uh, slash ceph slash ceph-ansible. And for ceph docker, it's just uh, the same github.com slash ceph slash ceph docker. And yeah, thanks for watching.